In the last few releases of Revit, Autodesk have been working towards a fully independent analytical model that can be used for a preliminary design. The idea behind this is that engineers can produce all their early design models directly within Revit. This allows for the design to be refined and developed within the Revit platform, taking analysis results directly from the various different design tools. In this video, we will look at producing a fully parametric portal frame model using some of the new tools found in Revit 2025. So you can see here that I have most of the model actually developed. And what we'll do is we'll begin by taking a look at the global parameter setup. I'm just going to switch into a plan view here. And we can see if I select one of these grids that we have global parameters controlling, in this case, the base size. And if I select this grid over here, I've got another global parameter actually controlling the span. Let's now look at this global parameter setup. To do this, I'll select the Manage tab and then I'll select global parameters. In here, you can see that we have a roof pitch, so that's currently set to eight degrees. I then have a calculated value. This is calculating the roof height from the ease level to the ridge. I've also got the span, and you can see currently it's set to 25 meters, and also then the base size, which is five meters. Let's now see what happens if we change some of these global parameter values. So I'll switch into my analytical model view, and we'll go ahead here and go back into the global parameter command and we'll now start to change some of these values. In the global parameters dialog box, let's begin by changing the span and reduce this to 20 meters. Again, if we click apply, we can actually see now the whole model has reconfigured. Let's also change the roof pitch, so we'll just increase this to 12 degrees. And again, we can see everything is updated accordingly. Let's now take a look at how we've modeled these members. So I'm going to start to put in some bracing on the end of this bay here. To do this, I'll select the Analyze tab, and here we'll select Member. Looking into the Context tab, I can see here that I have Start Endpoint Definition already selected, and I'm going to ensure here that I also have 3D Snapping configured. In the Properties palette, we can change our structural role, so this is just going to be a member, and then I can also change my section type. So in this case, I think I'll use a circular hollow section for my bracing. I can then start to model my bracing configuration. Now you'll notice here, I'm just roughly snapping to these columns here. So the only criteria here at the minute is that I want to make sure that the data I'm actually modeling here is actually snapped onto the columns themselves. Okay, so once we've now modelled these, let's take a look at some of the parameters on these nodes. Now, if your nodes aren't already visible, you'd need to go into Visibility Graphics here, select the Analytical Model Categories tab, and ensure that analytical nodes are selected and on. Once we can see the nodes, we can then make a selection set. And in this case here, I can see that we're measuring from the beginning of the bay, and here I'm using a normalised curve parameter. I could, of course, use a segment length if I wanted to, but in this case, I do want to use this normalised curve parameter. So here, I'm going to set this for a quarter of the way up the column frame, and I want to do the same with this one over here. So this one's also going to be 0.25, which will make that a quarter of the way up the frame. Okay, we'll now select these two nodes over here. And again here, these ones want to be at 50%. So in this case, I could just type in 0.5. And we can now see they've snapped and joined together. And of course, these ones over here will want to be 75%. Finally here, I can set this node to one. And this node down here will actually be set to zero. And you can now see that I have that parametric system built up. So let's now start the global parameter command again. And perhaps here we'll just change the base size to 6000. Changing this, we can see our bracing is reconfigured and moved automatically. Now another thing to notice here, that all of the columns are moving with the grids. And this is new in 2025. If I actually select one of these nodes, we can see that we now have a new command called move with grids. And this is a parameter that can be switched on or off. So you'll notice that this one's switched on. And in fact, most of these are switched on. So as well as being able to control the nodes with uh, normalized curve parameters and dimensions, we can also ensure that these elements stick to the grid. 
Once we've got a parametric and adaptive model such as this, we can then send it backwards and forwards to the various different design tools. And finally, we can use our analytical automation to build a physical steel model from this. And of course, we can also then use automation for connection design and so forth. So everything is now contained within our current Revit model. Okay, hope that's been useful and speak to you soon.